Today I wanted to work on a spooky well, like the opposite of a wishing well. Just cutting out a rough shape. No real rhyme or reason here. The shape that I picked, I was trying to emulate a hill that has been eroding. So it would look good on the tabletop, but also preserve the interest of seeing a deep well. And also preserve the ability to have a big ugly monster pop out of the well. That is not a recommended way to see if your hot pen is hot. Sandy the phones, the sculpt one will hold on better. Testing out a technique here. I really liked the way the heat was able to make the brick pattern expand, and I'm going to use that later for the bricks on the internal part of the well where I can't really get to. Also just playing around, seeing if I could get some interesting effects by using the heat on individual bricks. It rounded them off nicely, but it was pretty chaotic and I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it. For some reason the rocks that I have in my area are too flimsy, not pokey enough, and dirty to do the whole rock in a can technique, so I've used a variety of things to get around that, including this 3D printed texture. I saw a tip from Devs and Dice to make the first row of bricks you lay when you're hand laying bricks to be put down with the hot glue gun and then the remaining glued with PVA since PVA makes a stronger bond, but things tend to shift around. So use that hot glue to set up a sturdy base. It worked really well here, I recommend it. If I'm going to go to the trouble to hand place bricks, I like to cut them as chaotically as I can to emphasize the individual nature of each brick. kind of imagine my head that once it had a courtyard and set stairs and was a, a place that people went to either for wishes and miracles or perhaps just for water, but has since grown darker. Some of these are armatures from Woodland Scenics. Some of them are hand-built by a maker I ended up getting things from at a thrift store. And some of them are 3D printed. And that woven fence, that was a product of WizKids. Make sure to hold this just out of frame so that you can't see what I'm actually doing. I really liked the effect the black wash gave. It tinted all of the colors coming near the well, so the well seemed to be emanating its own darkness. When I'm coloring things like stone, I I like to take inspiration from the basic concept behind the leopard spotting technique. Not so much the particular colors they use, just the idea that if you're working with stone, there's a whole bunch of colors involved. 
So play around, work with it till it feels right, but make sure it's interesting. Here I'm using a technique that I picked up from Real Terrain Hobbies for making vines and uh, trying to use it to make roots hanging from the eroded hillside instead. You be the judge, but I feel like this worked out really well. The one modification I made to the Real Terrain Hobbies method was bulking up the uh, main stems with some Mod Podge and also using that to catch a lot of the little fibers just trying to make the tree roots look more substantial and less wispy. And as a final touch, I thought, why don't I try doing the sort of reverse of a highlight? And so I pulled black up from the bottom of the well, again, trying to increase that feeling that the black is emanating from the well, that its darkness is somehow spreading. And what spooky thing isn't improved by a little bit of purple. Then I decided I want to use this flocking that's a nice green color to try and emphasize that the nearer things get to the well, the more dead and decrepit they become. Here we go. I hope you enjoyed.